Footballers were under the spotlight like never before, and it was a time for a clean start for everyone's image. Chuck us a soap, Vinny. Not that hard. There were none of today's celebrity footballers in 1992 to provide the glamorous face of the game, so these ugly mugs were the best the sport had to offer. Before Sky came along, you had Saint and Greavesy, <laughs> who were like your embarrassing uncles at a party. I'll tell you what, you enjoy it. <laughs> and Sky came along and had, you know, had graphics, <laughs> and had boards for analysis, and Andy Gray, who was the most enthusiastic pundit anyone had ever seen in their life. <laughs> I mean, Gray's total enthusiasm. He loves his videos. He's like, he's just discovered the video experience, and he's got, you know, it comes to half time, and he's got all these little moments that he's noticed. I'll get the machine in a minute. Don't worry about that, Ian. It just shows you that I do what the damn things. Of course, everybody immediately said it was it was the death of football. The fact they're going to play games on a Sunday, and you know, that's it, over, finished. The money, man. Football's dead. But I'm not going to watch it. But watch it, we did. Sunday matches, Monday night football, Andy Gray's wild enthusiasm. They're all par for the course these days. But in 92, there were some even stranger ideas on transforming the game. It's my life. It's my life. Monday Night Football has arrived. The Monday Nights, the original Dancing Girls and the Entertainment, that was fantastic. I love that. This is it. I mean, this is the big time. Some high-kicking 14-year-olds. 14-year-olds? <laughs> well, that seemed to go down very well. The thousands, dancers, balloons all over the place, 15 sky strikers. Monday nights are going to be special.